I've paid thousands of dollars in courses to learn what you're basically teaching on your podcast for free. What you're putting out there is so valuable. So, you know, I just really want to acknowledge you and I definitely send everyone to your podcast. You were virtually one of the first mentors that I looked up to and started following. You're always one step ahead of the game, so I just wanted to give you kudos and props for that because lots of people are watching, lots of people are learning from it. Tucker and the whole TTM crew, Dan and Chris, thanks so much for your support. I love what you guys do and a huge, huge fan. Having this support's huge, so I'm grateful for that. What's up, everybody out there in listener land? This is the Real Deals Podcast. And of course, as always, I am your host, Tucker Merrihue. Hey, I'm going to do an episode for you guys this week. A little bit abbreviated, a little shorter. I'll be honest, I wasn't really feeling like doing an episode this week. I had uh, quite the week here in my own personal business, and uh, it was just kind of one of those dog shit weeks. But on the flip side, I thought, well, You know, you guys out there in listener land, I'm sure, have experienced a lot of this. And so maybe it's important that I pull back the curtain and I kind of show you guys that even as you kind of graduate to the higher levels of real estate investing, it doesn't mean that you're immune to problems, issues, and uh, the inevitable real estate roller coaster. So I'm going to record a show and uh, I'm going to tell you guys all about my wonderful week. (laughs) And uh, hopefully there'll be a learning experience in this for you guys as uh, there is for me as well. Uh, in all of the problems that we deal with, that's for sure. We try and look for the learning. Sometimes it's hard to see it initially uh, because it just sucks, but uh, in hindsight, it's a little easier to see how you can learn from a lot of your challenges. But that's going to be this week's short little show. Before I get into that, last week we dropped an episode that was all about our Driving for Dollars app enhancements and how you can use those to market to sellers in a variety of different ways. And uh, let me tell you, it's going to be really really cool and actually we've got uh, by the time this goes out the uh let's see android version of all those updates should have taken place we were a few days behind so i apologize for it we probably should have released that episode this week uh but the itunes version should be out this weekend and uh that's kind of our plan so it's absolutely an amazing app at this point with all the uh, data that it pulls so go check out last week's show and i kind of go through case in point all of the different data points in terms of contact um, or ways that you can contact a homeowner or a property owner and ways that you can market to them and you can use the data at the app polls to do that so check it out it definitely was one of our better shows i think in terms of tactical stuff no question all right real deals podcast listeners i want to talk quickly about our show's sponsor iron bridge lending if you guys have not reached out to iron bridge already to talk to them about funding some of your upcoming flip projects i highly encourage you to do so i've known the owner of iron bridge for a very long time i have personally borrowed millions of dollars from them over the years to do a number of different projects and i can say without a doubt they are the best hard money lending company i have ever come across and that is the reason why they are the sole sponsor of this show i've had a lot of other companies reach out to me and want to sponsor this show, but I just won't do it. I feel like I need to be genuine in who we have sponsoring the show, and it needs to be somebody that I've personally done a ton of business with. So I personally vouch for their ability to be the best, hands down, in the world of hard money lending. You won't find better programs, you won't find better terms, and they're lending or will be lending in over 20 states. So chances are, if you're hearing this in whatever state you're in, it's definitely worth it to check out their website, reach out to them, see if they're lending in your state, and if they are, I would absolutely encourage you to do business with them. Another very cool thing to note is that they have a program for most rehabs where you can actually borrow up to 90% of the purchase price. Now, this is given the fact that you are actually buying a deal, which if you're listening to the show, that means you probably are. But if you have an actual deal on the table, they'll fund up to 90% of your purchase price and they'll even give you rehab funds on top of that, which means that it only takes 10% down to get into a project, which is unbelievable in the hard money world. So, Do yourself a favor, reach out to Iron Bridge Lending, have a conversation with them, see if they're a good fit for you and for your next project. I can guarantee you that you'll be happy that you did. I guess I could tell you about uh, all kinds of things, but I'll just dive into what it is that I want to talk about this week, which is problems. Problems, 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 right? There's this big, you know, thing on the internet or the internet and social media has created this illusion, we'll call it, that... Those of us that are kind of in the influencer space talking to you guys out there in listener land, wherever you may be and whoever the influencer may be, that we got shit all figured out and that our lives are beautiful and 
we never have problems and we make all this money and it's just like a wonderful, wonderful thing. And the truth is, that's not the case at all. The, the reality of this life that we live in business and real estate investing is that as you climb the real estate ladder, as you climb the business ladder, it doesn't matter what type of business you're building, real estate is you know similar in a lot of regards to many other business types. You know, the types of problems that you take on change, but you still have problems. And the magnitude of problems that you face change dramatically um, in terms of they get bigger, <laughs> they get more costly, they get more expensive. And the only thing that, um, you know, you can do as an individual is to increase your ability to cope with those problems. And I think that's the biggest hang up that most people have is that they just... You know, I see this time and time again in my daily life. The biggest reason, and I did a show on this, but I'm going to kind of elaborate on it a little more because I'm in one of those weeks right now. The biggest reason that most people never make it in the world of self-employment and ultimately the world of real estate investing, because that's what real estate investing is. I mean, you can have a, a day job and do real estate investing, but if you go full time, the reason why most people don't make it is because they just can't handle the stress. They can't handle the pressure. And, and the stress and the pressure comes from being in the middle of dealing with problems constantly. That's essentially what we do. We deal with problems constantly. And so, you know, it's easy to say, well, you got to take the mindset of you're a problem solver. And if you do that, it's easier. And that's, there's some truth to that. There is, but some days, some weeks are just complete dog shit. And that mantra that's preached from stage sounds good in theory, but uh, you can still have weeks and days to throw you for a loop. There's just no question and, um, you know, make you go throw your hands up in the air and go, why the hell am I even doing all this, right? And I've had one of those weeks. There's there's absolutely no question. I feel like I have been on a, uh, you know, I'm Mike Tyson's punching bag on all sides uh, of the business this week. And uh, it's just one of those weeks. And it happens. And the reason why I'm telling you is because nobody's immune to it none of us you know social media um, you know influencer types guru types those of us on a microphone talking into your earbuds um, via podcast via Facebook live via whatever it is right whatever vehicle it is that we communicate with you guys those of us that um, you know maybe you put us on a pedestal maybe you don't you shouldn't by the way we're just normal people just like you uh, we just happen to be a little bit better at maybe communicating through a microphone or talking when the camera's on but that's it other than that we're the same as you but we have problems too we got lots of problems we got lots of challenging problems so this week I've had a variety and um, you know over the growth of my career these problems you know back in the day probably would have buried me and I would have been out down and out for a long time just spinning my wheels trying to deal with these problems and I had a couple days this week where I was buried in the shits of dealing with all of this but uh, I've kind of re-emerged trying to figure out how we make heads or tails of all this stuff but we basically started off the week with uh, a lovely uh, neighbor next door to one of our projects that we listed as soon as we listed the project, he decided to pile trash and crap and a dump trailer and just a bunch of shit right on the property line, right as people pull in. So they pull in, they look at the property, and they look at this huge mound of shit and a dump trailer full of crap, his Christmas tree that he still hadn't gotten rid of. And he did this to basically spite us because we cut down some bushes that were legally ours and the people that we bought the property from actually planted decades ago because we bought it from the original owners. He's lived there three years and he thought that he could lay claim to those bushes. And so he was pissed that we cut them. And so because of that, he was gonna spite us. Even though by doing so, he's hurting himself because the less we sell the house for, the less his house is worth, but he didn't care. He was blinded by spite and rage and irritation or whatever, which there's a lot of people like that in Portland, by the way, which are just idiots, but that's Portland. And that's really across the country too. There, there's, <laughs> there's not just idiots Portland, there's idiots everywhere, that's for sure. So we had uh, that to deal with. So we basically were forced to build a fence to then hide this guy's crap. I went over and, uh, you know, police raid style banged on the door. I know he was home. Uh, he wouldn't answer the door. I banged five times just to make my point. Um, and uh, he still wouldn't answer the door. I called him. He wouldn't take my call. So very passive aggressive bullshit that this individual was pulling. And uh, at the end of the day, it was a problem, and I just wanted to talk to him. And most people, this is what I've realized too, most people are very adverse to having confrontation. 
they 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 just they'll do everything that they can in life to be passive aggressive and they won't have confrontation. I think there's just way too many people that are afraid to get punched in the face these days. To be honest with you, not that you can, because if I punched anybody in the face, they'd probably sue me, and then you know a lot of people who work for me wouldn't have jobs. I'd be tied up in litigation, and they'd probably get a lot of money on me. So I can't. My hands are tied. But verbally, I can lay into them and I can tell them what I think, and there's nothing wrong with that. But still. People won't answer the door when I go knock on it, and they won't take my calls. So they're very adverse to any sort of, you know, um, tense conversation, we'll call it. And so that started our week. We ended up having to put in a fence. Cost us a fair bit of money to hide this guy's crap. He also um, decided to park a, a car right on the property line as well. So he basically drove across his own driveway to park a car uh, right on the property line along with all of his crap. And so he literally rutted out his own front yard because it's been raining a lot. Uh, and in the process of doing that, um, you know, he essentially parked the car on the property line. So he got uh, he got what he wanted out of the deal, which was, uh, you know, to spite us. But uh, at the same time, he ruined his front yard. So hopefully it was worth it to him. So that was the start of our week. And then we got going with, uh, for those of you guys that have been watching our uh, series Million Dollar Builds, which we'll have another episode out here eh, probably next week, maybe something like that. We've got a bunch of problems going on there that uh, I'll elaborate on a little bit. One is which uh, we're frozen with the city. They won't pass us with our tree protection, which is uh, basically fencing that goes around trees to say that they're protected when you build. And the reason they won't pass us is because a certain general contractor that's working on a house behind us decided to drop a bunch of gravel within the drip line of the biggest tree on our entire lot. And that, uh, in the city's eyes, uh, damages the tree and puts it at risk of dying. And it happens to be about a $15,000 fine that they're trying to slap us with. So we've not only been trying to negotiate our way out of this fine and telling them that we didn't drop the gravel, uh, but they're also taking three weeks to review what it is exactly that they're going to do. So we've got millions of dollars sitting on the board trying to build this house, and we've been in week three now of being frozen. We can't do anything because of some gravel that got dropped. So it's a twofold problem. The first of the problem is the fact that uh, we've got a guy who decided to drop gravel on our property. The second is we've got the city who uh, won't allow us to uh, basically do what we need to do. Now, on top of that, <laughs> the general contractor behind us who we've had the water line issue with decided to send me a $10,000 bill for the fact that uh, they've been without water behind us. And so he's basically trying to say that we're responsible for three weeks worth of losses on their job and job delays and this and that uh, because they didn't have water to the house, which they could have very easily had if they just ran a hose. Uh, but they're at the point in construction where it, they don't need water. The only thing they need water for is for their towel guy to maybe cut some tile, which could have easily been accomplished with running a hose up the driveway. So he sent me uh, a bill for basically almost 10 grand. And now I'm at the point where um, he's probably gonna try and lean our property because we're in a lovely state here of Oregon where a contractor can lean any property without any validity in terms of contracts being signed or any sort of paperwork to proof that you owe them any money as a property owner. And so the, he's gonna probably file that lien and I'm gonna have to bond over it and we're gonna have to go through this whole mediation process so I can show the mediators that he's an absolute complete fucking idiot. And then hopefully that that'll get resolved, but I gotta go through that whole process. And so we got all this stuff going on. We've got a variety of other issues as well, but those are some of the big ones that have been taking a lot of my time this week and um, really just dealing with idiocy on all sides. And it happens. That's just the reality of this business. That's the world of self-employment, folks. If this is what you're signing up for, it's not always rah-rah, sometimes there's problems, but silver lining is this. As you continue forward, as you grow, you do have to look at it a little bit like some of the gurus, the people that speak from stage, in terms of, you know, you learn or you earn, and you also get better at dealing with problems. That's that's pretty much the way it works. So there's a few things that we could have done to avoid the problems that we're dealing with right now. We'll make sure that uh, we adjust moving forward so that we attempt to not deal with these problems again. But number two is your coping abilities get stronger as you progress as an entrepreneur, as you progress as a business owner, as you progress as a real estate investor, you get better at dealing with stuff. So, you know, any one of those things could have spun somebody out, a normal person out for a long time, you know, and so it, they spun me out for 
lot less amount of time. It still affects you, of course. You can't just be completely numb to everything. Uh, otherwise, you know, you'd be a sociopath, right? But your coping mechanisms get better. Your ability to communicate your balls uh, get bigger because you're forced to have these difficult conversations with people that, like I said earlier, most people are just deathly afraid of having these confrontations with people. You're forced to have those kind of conversations in this business, people. If you can't do that, you're not going to make it in this business. Just telling you right now, you got to be able to uh, stand your ground, have those conversations, and tell people how it is. And that's that's just the way it is. And um, I think that in itself is one of those skill sets that um, you know a lot of people lack. And so that and uh, the ability to cope and problem solve, those are the biggest things. Those are the biggest things that hold people up in life in general. I know this is a real estate podcast, but in life, like you have to be able to deal with problems and um, not let it just completely freeze you and let the stress and the challenge of coming up with solutions uh, just kind of halt you completely in life. And that's why a lot of people get stagnant and that's why they don't progress and that's why they don't grow. And that's why year after year, they are in the exact same spot that they were five years ago, 10 years ago, whatever. Uh, if you're younger, three years ago, it, 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 or if you're older, 20 years ago, right? I know a lot of people that are literally at, at the same lot in life now that they were a long time before. And the reason being is because they don't grow those skill sets or they're afraid to, or they feel that discomfort. They feel that, oh man, this is just confrontational and I don't like it. And really it starts with like direct mail. You send out direct mail, somebody calls and they're angry and you're like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it, right? Well, that's the beginning of that skill set kicking in saying, I don't want confrontation. I don't want to deal with it. I want to live in this bubble and everything's nice and fluffy and rainbows and butterflies. You live in that bubble, you're never going to progress. So you have to understand that if you want to get to the other side of the tracks, you want to get to success, quote unquote, you have to be uncomfortable almost all the time. I mean, that's just the reality of it. And the only the only silver lining here, again, is that you have to get as comfortable as you can being uncomfortable. And there, most days, you're still going to be slightly uncomfortable, but you're going to get a hell of a lot better at dealing with problems and confrontation and issues and, uh, you know, basically growing a set, right? <laughs> that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. And then being able to handle your problems mentally um, and continue forward with your day at the same time. So that's this week's show. Learn how to handle, learn how to cope, learn how to deal with people. Don't be afraid of conflict. Don't be afraid of controversy. Don't be afraid of having difficult conversations with people. It's a skill set that it's just so lacked in society today. People are so bad at having confrontational conversations. They are so bad at it. They avoid it like the plague. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, probably the root of it is that there's just this deep seated fear of getting punched in the face, but nobody punches anybody anymore because you get sued. Uh, but they're still deathly afraid of that confrontation. So you got to embrace confrontation. I'm not saying you go out there and you're just a crazy maniac punching people, but you embrace confrontation and you learn how to navigate those types of conversation because that's a super important skill set. Nobody teaches it. And I can tell you what, our youth are, man, I hope something that changes because they really need to learn. But there's a lot of adults out there right now that completely lack that skill as well. And, um, you know, for example, the guy that decided to park his car on a property line and throw trash there, he was uh, about as passive aggressive as they come. So anyway, hopefully you guys got something from my stories, my rant, uh, my little bit of bitching and moaning this week, but it happens. It's one of those weeks. It's one of those weeks, that's for sure. But uh, you know what? Next week's another week, and uh, it's a roller coaster. Some weeks are up, some weeks are down, and that's the real estate roller coaster that we ride. So anyway, pulling back the curtain. That's what's going on with me this week. That's this week's show. I'll see you guys next week, and uh, it'll be a better week for us. Talk to you then.